Hello everyone. In today's command tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at submarine warfare. Now, a lot of the stuff that applies for anti-submarine warfare also applies for submarine warfare. The same techniques you're using to find and destroy the submarine are basically the counter tactics that we need to use. So what I've done for you today is I basically set up a quick little, almost like a Mickey Mouse sort of demonstration of the effects of sound. And I've also sent up a neat little convoy attack style mission to try to explore some of the concepts that we learned here. So let me go ahead and grab my little cheat sheet here. Usually I don't do this, but today I thought I would because it's really critical we get a couple things kind of down. This might be something you copy paste somewhere. I think it's kind of helpful personally. So um, basically submarine warfare is all about not being seen. Um, a good submarine is one that you can use tomorrow. It's not one that gets detected and hunted and destroyed. Remember aircraft will wreck you if they even have the slightest idea of where you are. So keep that in mind. So anyway, it's all about emissions. Um, if you poke your mast out of the ocean, somebody's going to see the mast, they're going to attack it. If you're stupid enough to turn on a surface search radar on the surface, they're going to detect you in ESM, and they're going to destroy you. If you use active sonar, they're going to get an active sonar intercept, and they're going to destroy you. So a lot of what we do is going to be basically submerged, with a few exceptions, depending on kind of where we are. So as far as noise is concerned, there's basically a couple different elements that dictate noise. Uh, the first one is environmental conditions. Let's actually take a look at our environmental conditions. We see that it's nighttime. Generally, at nighttime, the water is a little bit cooler. Uh, we notice that there's some heavy clouds. It does not impact us. Rain impacts us, however. If it is very rainy, the pure so uh, sonar operators are never going to be able to hear a thing because, again, all that shh kind of coming down at the same time. Likewise, if it's very windy, the ocean gets churned up, and you won't be able to hear a thing with sonar, which is actually great for the submarine, except if you're trying to find something to actually attack. You're going to have to rely on something data linked over to you. So that's just a couple quick considerations. Also, temperature matters because temperature is going to dictate, along with the depth, your convective zones. Now, if you remember way, way back in the day, when we were talking about our sonar detection rings, we talked about convective zones. Basically, because of the layer, when you make a sound, it actually bounces into the layer, bounces back up, bounces down to the layer, bounces back up, bounces, 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 bounces. So what can happen is a surface ship over here listening in on these different depths can actually hear you at these little ring distances, even though you're all the way over here. Now the reason that's important for us is because if we're in shallow water, check this out, let's go find out right over here off the coast of Sri Lanka, you'll notice there's no convective zones because the water is so shallow, you don't get that effect, which means us as a submarine, it's much harder for them to pick us up. The other element I want to point out as well is the fact that your um, ocean floor has a huge impact on the sound. Is it close to the submarine? Is it farther away? Remember, if you're a submarine, you can actually park on the ocean floor and basically turn invisible if you shut everything down. Um, obviously, if you're in something that's rock, it's going to reflect a lot harder than sand as far as sound goes. Keep in mind, the deeper the ocean, the easier it is to detect the submarine, but obviously you're giving the submarine more room to hide. Um, it's also going to matter uh, how fast you're traveling. We're going to see that in example. Cavitating, we'll see that in an example. What depth we're traveling at. Keep in mind, if the water's shallow, we can't actually travel at all. This is minus 66 feet in this example. That simply means that we wouldn't even be able to hide our sail, which is this top part kind of hanging out of the top. And of course, what type of propulsion we'll use, but we'll explore that. All right, let's look at our first little, little demo thing here. So basically, we have a set of good old-fashioned sturgeon, you know, SSN 637s. And we know, I'm going to go ahead and turn on the bad guys for a second here. We'll actually unfriendly in this case. These are all Oliver Hazard Perry frigates. This one's been assigned to travel periscope depth, shallow depth, a little bit above that layer, a little bit below the layer, and of course, as deep as possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to the other team. One thing I'm going to warn, though, is the fact that these parries have variable depth sonar. They actually can tow a sonar array behind them. They're also stopped. Because they're stopped, they're not going to be making any noise, so it's going to make them much, much easier to detect the incoming submarines. So anyway, go ahead and zoom out just a little bit. All the submarines are going to be traveling at 10 knots, by the way, in case you're curious. I'm going to go ahead and unpause. Speed up time. Go ahead and turn on uh, mega mode here. Let's see, this guy is probably... Look at him race downwards. Look at how far down the bottom of the ocean is. We're never going to pick him up. Notice, pause, that this submarine traveling at 10 knots, you have a little sign that says the word cav. Cav means cavitating. 
what it means when you cavitate is basically you create this big thing of bubbles. Think about like if you take your hand and whack the top of a pool, you make all the bubbles all over your hand. They're tremendously loud. And because of that, it can actually be louder than your ship itself and makes you much easier to detect on broadband scans. So anyway, go ahead and turn on our little view here. You can see all these submarines are choo-chooing directly towards the Oliver Hazard Perry, who's just patiently waiting here in the ocean. So what we're looking for is the moment he gets detected. Go ahead and uh, fast forward real quickly here. Stop. Okay, so place your bet. Who got detected first? I bet you it's this one. Surprise! It was the one that was below the lair. You're probably sitting there going, what? I thought it was going to be the ship that was cavitating up here. Ah, uh, you forgot something. You forgot that this ship actually dips his sonar into the water down below the layer. So unfortunately, our buddy who's chilling just below the layer here is accidentally basically reflecting his sound off the ocean floor like this directly, beautifully, perfectly into his sonar. Isn't that interesting? Okay, let's see what happens next here. I'm actually going to get rid of that. We don't need it. Whoop, got another one. So our next victim is our deep diver. And again, the reason we were able to detect him at this depth is because of the toad sonar array. So, hmm, let's see what happens next. The suspense is killing me too. I'm sure this, pause. <laughs> Check this out. This ship is traveling at a above layer, which means it's just above that little convective layer. He didn't get detected until it was a distance of uh, three nautical miles. But we picked these guys up almost 11, no, like oh, about eight or nine nautical miles away. So keep in mind, these distances are pretty big. Let's go ahead and pause. Kind of let them do their thing. I have a feeling this one's going to be our next victim. Place your bets. Now, if these guys only... I win. If these ships only possessed sonar that was on the hull, this entire scenario would have been reversed, in which case we would have picked these ships up before we picked these ships up. So we picked this one up. Look at this distance, though. It's a distance of three nautical miles, and he's chilling at periscope depth. Yikes. But look at who our winner is. Wait for the sound. Pause. Our winner was her shallow. Interesting, interesting, interesting. So in this particular case, they weren't detected until also three nautical miles. So in this particular situation, when they were traveling at higher speed in deeper depths, they were actually easier to detect because this platform was reading down into the water. So anyway, that's our beginning little kind of, like I said, Mickey Mouse scenario. So that gives you an idea of depth. Remember, this scenario is completely reversed if the ship detecting you is using a hull mounted sonar. To check that, you can click on the ship. If you scroll scroll down a little bit, you can actually see exactly what style of sonar they're actually using. This is the TAS. There is a whole sonar on here, but it's not the greatest, as you could probably imagine. But this is going to be their winner. Incredible piece of technology. All right, let's look at our next situation. So I'm going to go up to the top again. And this time, we're going to explore speed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my nuclear submarine. I'm going to park it uh, right here. What's that a distance of? That's a distance of, I'll go even closer, why not, right? We'll put him one mile away. And right here. So I'm gonna go, he's just gonna sit right there and his brakes are gonna be on. I'm gonna take this particular submarine, again, same exact model, this is the sturgeon, and I'm gonna run up to creep speed at a depth of shallow. I'm gonna take this one, go ahead and I'll cruise right there, set it to cruise speed and set a depth of shallow. I'm gonna set this submarine, Go ahead and click right here. Set this one to full speed at shallow. And then last but not least, we're going to set this one to flank speed at shallow. Watch this. OK, so place your bets. If I had to guess, you would assume that this one would be detected first. I'm actually going to check my WRA real quick. I'm going to make sure they're not accidentally doing stupid stuff. Yeah, they're not set to avoid contact. We're good. Switch back to this. OK. Theoretically, we should be picking this one up first. Let's find out what happens. Observe. 
Our first victim was the one that was located close by. You're sitting there going, but he was stopped. He's not making any speed. How is he detected? A nuclear submarine makes noise all the time. They can't be quiet because they have to keep their nuclear reactors cool. An electric submarine, like a diesel, we'll see this in a minute or so, will not have the same limitation. So even though he's sitting here parked, making barely any noise, still completely instantly detected by the Oliver Hazard Perry at a depth of shallow, which we already discussed, is actually very effective for these ships. Okay, let's go ahead and undo things and let's let time kind of pass. My next bet would be the guy in the bottom. Or is it? Let's find out. Ha <laughs> ha! Told ya! So check this out. This one was detected at a distance of four nautical miles. By the way, your torpedo range on those ships, submarines is about 10 nautical miles. This Oliver Hazard Perry would be having a bad day. So again, notice how stealthy these subs really are. So we'd expect this one to be the next one. Told you. Now this one's moving full speed and it was detected at four and a half nautical miles. We're expecting this one next. Keep in mind, he's going a lot slower. What did we pick up? Did you hear it? Now we're fine. Just messing with you. Watch this. Oop, pause. Ha ha, check this out. So this guy was detected also at four nautical miles. Interesting. You might be seeing something similar here. Now this is where it's going to get fun. This submarine, are you expecting it to be detected at four nautical miles like all these other ones were? Or are you expecting it to be detected at less? Because remember, this one was picked up at one nautical mile. Let's find out. Keep in mind, if this frigate were moving, we wouldn't have nearly as much luck detecting these subs. All right, place your bets. We're already at a distance of seven. Remember, all the other ones got busted at four nautical miles, which is right here. All right, here we go. Again, this is an interesting way to look at it. And hopefully you're realizing that speed only matters once you start getting closer to the target. But at the end of the day, it's distance is almost more important than how fast you're going. Of course, if the Oliver Hazard Perry had his helicopter in the air, this would be a very different discussion. Ready? Interesting. Observe. Pause. Notice the creep, creep speed only reduced his detection distance by one nautical mile. Obviously, if you're traveling a little bit deeper, things would be different. Okay, I'm actually going to reopen the scenario, kind of reset everything real quick, and we're going to take a look at the last but not least piece. So down here, before we do the actual tactics stuff, we have ourselves a very modern SSN. We have our, you know, a little older one. It's a Victor III. It's not a bad submarine. We also have a classic diesel, a Romeo, and of course down here we have a very modern diesel with AIP. So we're going to do the exact same scenario as we just did a minute ago. I'm going to go ahead and set these guys to shallow depth. I'm going to set them at a speed of one zero knots. Grab this one. Go ahead and order him to move here. I'm going to order him up to a speed of one zero knots. Keep it nice and shallow to keep everything nice and even. I'm going to grab the classic diesel. I'm going to go ahead and go this way. Also order him to go one zero knots, which is actually a lot of work for a diesel, as you'll see. And of course, we'll grab our extremely modern diesel. Go ahead and over here, set it up to one zero knots as well. Shallow. Go ahead and pause real quick, kind of let everybody get lined up real fast. I'm actually going to delete this junk up here. We don't need it right now. Like I said, we don't need it right now. OK, we'll come back to that later. OK, so as I was saying earlier, a nuclear submarine has incredible speed but as a result it is also fairly loud because of the reactor on board modern nukes are very quiet this particular one i believe maximum volume oh man look at this 95 decibels that's insane our more classic one our victor 3 here we actually scroll down real quick 110 decibels which is still pretty loud now check this out look at the romeo 115, 116, 117. That is a loud submarine. Remember, when you're dealing with decibels, one decibel is equivalent of squaring. So that's insane. And of course, we have an extremely modern diesel. What do you expect here? Check this out. 90 decibels. So this 
particular diesel submarine has another neat little twist to it. It has the ability to run on what they call air independent propulsion. That means we can use the diesel at diesel speeds without having to surface and get air. Now our classic diesel up here, our Romeo, we have to come up to periscope depth to stick our snorkel out of the into the ocean air in order to actually run the diesel engines. Remember, I have limited battery on this thing. Right now I've only got two hours of battery and that's it. I'm out. I gotta recharge. This particular craft, I have 10 hours of this air independent propulsion before I'm completely out. By the way, once you're out of air independent propulsion, you can only get more if you return to port. Of course, our nukes, we don't care. We can go as fast as we want all afternoon and nobody's going to notice and nobody's going to care. Of course, coming back up to our SSN, our 21 here, he's got the same thing. He's got basically unlimited endurance. Okay, let's go ahead and switch back here. Now, think about this really carefully. Our loudest submarine of this bunch right now is actually our good old-fashioned classic diesel. This one right here, the classic SSN, is pretty quiet. This one's very quiet. This one's very, very quiet. So watch what happens here. Go ahead and speed up time. So place your bets. You would expect the Romeo to get caught first. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Look at how fast he's chewing. Remember, you can't replace this quickly. Okay, notice he's running a battery and AIP at the same time. The reason being is we're going very quick. Keep in mind, our Romeo here, our diesel, is only running off of um, battery. And obviously these two guys are nukes. Look at that. Pause. All right, here's our first victim. So the air independent propulsion traveling at 10 knots was spotted at 3.4 nautical miles. Not bad. So of course, if I switched back to the subs, I could actually say, hey, watch this. Let's go nice and deep, bring us to creep speed. And he'll be gone forever our next victim we expect our diesel to be. However, our diesel ran out of battery and was able to come in incapable of completing this exercise. <laughs> so what I'll have to do is order him up to periscope depth to actually recharge. Hopefully that is uh, also a valuable lesson for you uh, diesel types. All right, I'm going back to the surface force. I'm going to unpause. So now this, he's going to have to come to the surface, turn his diesel, pause. Our next victim, is our classic SSN, exactly what we expected. This is a very loud sub. Our distance detected was about three nautical miles also. Let's go ahead and pause. Pause. Now our sea wolf has been spotted. Notice our sea wolf got spotted at a distance of 2.4 nautical miles. Those extra few decibels make a huge difference, in case you haven't noticed. And of course, this guy is uh, hitting the deck as fast as he can. He's already actually all the way down, but um, it's not doing anything because he's too close. Of course, our friendly little diesel buddy right here isn't working so hot because it's desperately trying to recharge its batteries. Look at that. It's basically at full stop because it can't proceed. It's got to creep it ahead at least. Can it at least creep? No, it's completely out of just about everything. So that's just embarrassing. So um, we're creeping along at uh, diesel power now, so at least you can kind of see the scenario. Keep in mind, this is running on a diesel engine, so you'd expect at any second for the uh, frigate here to spot him, which he did. Keep in mind, the distance he was detected at is still four nautical miles. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense as far as sound goes. You've got to know what kind of stuff you're being scanned by. Again, if you're being scanned by something you can only see down to the layer, you're safe unless it's shallow water, in which case be very, very careful. All right, let's go ahead and uh, reset our scenario one more time here. And let's get to the actual tactics. So I'm going to delete all these guys, these guys, yeah, whatever. Let's scoot up here. So up in the Strait of Hormuz, we have a pair of submarines working as a wolf pack. Our first one over here is a Kilo class. Uh, that's an 877, that's an M model. Let's take a look at the stats on that one real quick. Do you remember what we just learned a minute ago? Uh, let's take a look here. Um, creep throttle is about 10 knots for the diesels. The electric motor can also take us up to 19 knots if I'm fairly shallow. But of course, we're chewing through battery like crazy. How much battery do we actually carry? So let's see here. Hmm. Weapon-wise, we have no anti-ship missiles, but we do have these wake-homing torpedoes. Hmm. Maximum range is four nautical miles. 
if you've learned anything so far, you'll realize that three to four nautical miles is kind of the magic you're going to get caught range. So kind of keep that in mind. One thing we do have going for ourselves, though, look at how fast this torpedo is. Keep that in mind. All right, our buddy over here is a Los Angeles class. I mean, you can't do better than this. This is one of the best submarines ever. This particular one, let's see what we're equipped with here. Uh, actually, first of all, let's take a look how quiet the thing is. Remember, 90 was the Seawolf. E. That's a lot louder. So four nautical miles is pretty much going to be our cutoff as far as how close we're going to be able to get before they're able to spot us. So we have to kind of keep that in the back of our head through the whole scenario. Weapon-wise, this is awesome news for us. Is um, This is a classic Los Angeles, which means we get, yes, you guessed it, the TASM. Tomahawk anti-ship missile, which actually is going to get shot down. But it's worth a shot, right? Okay. So let's go ahead and proceed. So the first thing I'm going to do is I know they just left Bender Abbas. So they're going to be somewhere in here on a vector probably like this heading for the ocean. So that's why I set that initial zigzag course up. Like I said, I have a feeling they're going to be about here. Our Kilo, of course, is a much slower sub, but remember how quiet it was. We basically had to land on top of this thing in order to actually hear it. So that means we can cruise pretty effectively here, getting up to the kind of danger zone. This is sort of the pinch point. Now, this particular strait is 30 nautical miles across, and we know our weapons for this ship are only four mile range. Meanwhile, the ASM, I think those are like 110. They're really, really long range. Let me go take a look real quick. Mm, doo -doo -doo -doo. Push the button. What do we got for range here? What do we got? What do we got? 250 nautical miles. So if we can identify the targets, we can destroy them. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and order this ship to actually choo-choo as fast as it can. I'm going to send it as deep as possible. Keep in mind, we're not terribly deep right here. So as deep as possible isn't that deep. Set it up to a flank speed. I'm going to go ahead and grab our kilo here. I'm going to keep ourselves at periscope depth. We're going to go up to a full speed because I don't want to use all my battery. Keep in mind, you have to use battery and diesels to go fast. So let's go ahead and unpause. So the first thing we want to do is come up to periscope depth to get a listen with our ESM mast. By the way, if you're looking for more anti-actual submarine warfare, go play Dangerous Waters or Silent Hunter. This does a good job, but it's not perfect. Word of warning, by the way, your scenario features and settings, you want to make sure you shut off realistic submarine communications for this kind of an activity. So anyway, we are now up at a depth of 65 feet. If we actually switched over to 3D view real quick. Again, we're entering the target area. We can afford to go pretty quick. Hey, what was that? There we go. So we have our beautiful Los Angeles. He's diving. The reason he's diving is he's trying to get up to full speed here. The only way we can use his full speed is if we go deep. Otherwise, we cavitate. Swinging over to the beautiful... Look at what model that is. That's gorgeous. It's such a cool submarine. This one, of course, is sitting at periscope depth, which also means its ESM masts are poking out of the water, listening very carefully to see if there's anything out there electronic. Fingers crossed that we do identify. So now, if you remember, ASW is awfully slow warfare. You should see what submarine warfare is like. All right, slow down. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, we've gone a pretty good distance here. I'm going to bring my speed down to creep, and I'm going to come up to periscope depth. The reason I'm doing that, by the way, notice the water is significantly shallower, and I've lost my CZs, which just made us deadly, because now it's going to be much more difficult to detect us at a long distance. So I'm going to go ahead and bring ourselves up to the surface here. Just going to slow down really gently. Make sure you slow down before you come close to the surface. Did you see the cavitation? Yikes. Let's hope that does not bite me in a minute. We should have slowed down and then ordered periscope depth. All right. We're taking a look around with our periscope. We're taking a look around with our periscope. Good enough. Deep as possible. Take us back up to cruise speed. We just needed to take a peek. The idea here is if the enemy has any form of electronic anything going, we'll be able to detect that. Whether he's trying to jam us or whether he's trying... <laughs> <laughs> that looks a little weird. All right, we'll cruise along for a little while here. All right, what time is it? We'll go ahead and do our next peekaboo at 22. Slow down just a little bit. Okay, we're going to go ahead and order it to come to periscope depth one more. Creep speed. Reduce speed to creep. I'm going to take him shallow. I'm going to see if he can take a listen. All right, we're running off a of battery now. We've uh, we've chewed through quite a bit of battery. Like I said, we were going pretty fast there for a long time. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and bring up the Los Angeles. Now, word on sonar baffles. You'll probably observe that there's this little, like, kind of like a Pac-Man shape here. The submarine cannot hear anything behind itself. If it had a towed array, like the um, big uh, the Sea Wolf class, I believe, has a towed array, you could actually avoid this problem because you could basically tow your microphone behind you somewhere. 
So um, it's just kind of interesting how that kind of a thing works out. So we're going to pop up for just a second. Remember, if we detected any form of radar, we want to press this dive button as fast as we can. Meanwhile, our kilo, I've slowed him down significantly. Actually, I'm going to slow him down all the way. I want him to go ahead and uh, start charging those batteries up if I can help it. You never know when you're going to need battery. All right, our Los Angeles is slowly creeping upwards here. All right, just a minute. I'm, we're just taking a listen to see if there's any electronic anything out there. Remember, surface search on a ship radar is not that great, but it will give you away. Ready? Taking a listen, taking a listen. Okay, back down. That's enough. Okay. Go ahead and check again in uh, 15 minutes or so. Oh, what time is it? Pause. Okay. We are cavitating. See, see, see. One of the co that's is bad. I should have been. I should not have fast forward. That was bad, 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 bad. We're cavitating. We're going too fast. So remember how the water got shallower? Which the shallower you are, the lower speed your cavitation starts. So I'm going to go ahead and order avoid cavitation. But if you remember, I want to come up and take another listen. Let us hope that the enemy is not close by with a helicopter. Otherwise, this is going to be a very short engagement. In which case, we probably just lost. That would also mean the target would have to be within four nautical miles of us, which that doesn't seem very likely if you ask me. All right, we're going to go ahead and take him down to shallow. Make his speed. Make turns for cruise, please. That's not very fast. Make turns for full, please. That's going to get us four hours endurance. Four hours at 10 knots is going to get us 40 miles. That's going to get us to this point, and we're going to be out of battery. Ugh. All right, back to periscope depth. Meanwhile, our Providence is coming back up here to take a quick little listen to see if it detects anything. Get ready to press the down button. Again, we're just seeing if there's any, any, mini, anybody, any, mini, and a scene in a minute. Down. Okay. We just took a quick little listen. It did not detect any electron. By the way, this is one uh, argument for Fog of War here. It's pretty obvious there's something coming, <laughs> but that's okay. It's just fun to watch the torpedoes in the water. Anyway, moving on. So we are now, if we did the math real quick, if these guys are doing 10 knots and they left from Bender or Boss, 10 knots in four hours gets them to here. This would be six hours. We've been going for a few hours now. Let's see, we've gone for about an hour and a half, which would push them somewhere either here or in here, depending on how quick they're actually going. Which means, I really wish there were strong tools, by the way. I would expect that the engagement would start somewhere here. Engagement starts. So I'm going to go ahead and leave myself a little note there. So as we start getting closer to that point, we're going to have to be progressively slower. I'm going to order him back up to full speed. I'm going to go ahead and avoid cavitation. And of course, the problem with this now is we're going to not be able to get our kilo caught up. So I'm really hoping my uh, Los Angeles here is going to be able to spot the target so that we can basically get him in a better position, if that makes sense. All right, let's see how we're doing. And stop. Let's go ahead and slow ourselves back down, come back up to periscope depth. We're just taking a listen. Keep in mind, American submarines, especially modern ones like this, it's kind of tough to detect their periscopes. It's not to say it's impossible, it's just tough. Meanwhile, this guy is uh, doing the best he can. I'm going to bring him back up to cruise here. All right, bring us back up to the surface. We're just taking a little, all we're trying to do is detect if there's any electronic emissions anywhere out there. It could be anything. It could be a ship's navigation radar. It could be basically anything. It could even be an air search radar. If we can pick it up, we can engage it. Because remember, we have anti-ship missiles. Got it. Down, 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 down. Creep. Take us down, take us down. We got something. Unknown, skunk. What do we know about it? We've detected it with the ANWLR. OK, let's see what the ANWLR. I believe that is a tool that we can use. Contact emissions, contact report, low frequency sonar. We've detected they're using sonar. Oh, no. They're using active sonar. That's what we detected them by. We didn't even detect them by the fact that they were out there visually or electronically. They're pinging us. Uh-oh. Oh boy, active sonar. Okay, this is going to be problematic. All right, so active sonar is tricky because you're basically you're treating like a radar that doesn't work great. So I'm going to go ahead and take my Los Angeles, basically throw him back at the ocean floor here. Okay, so we have no idea. He's moving at 12 knots. Okay, go. 
12 knots, traveling at 16.4 nautical miles. Dun, 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 dun. Gets him here in about an hour and 15 minutes. We can anti-ship missile him at any time. The problem is we need to identify him before we put a missile through the side of him. He could be friendly for all we know. We've picked it up already. His active sonar is probably going to have about a 10 nautical mile range. 10 nautical miles from us is going to be about here. Okay. I'm going to rename this point called Let Him Have It. <laughs> That's going to be the critical distance. If he gets any closer than that, then the possibility of us being detected, keep in mind, we're not moving. So we're going to be very, very difficult to detect. The other thing about active sonar is it's just like a radar. If we give him just this little tiny, teeny tiny nose, he's never going to be able to see us. If we give him our side, it's going to be a much easier time for him to engage us. So if we were more clever, we'd actually turn around and try to get our buddy Kilo to kind of help us out with this, which is exactly what I'm going to do. Take your, uh, uh, mm -hmm. thinking this through real quick. I really need to make, he's got to go fast. Periscope depth, crank on it. I'm actually going to turn my other ship here around, try to get myself a better angle in the situation. Uh, deep as possible, go, 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 go. Very unlikely he's going to be detected at that distance, because keep in mind, yeah, he's not going to pick us up. So I'm going to go ahead and step on it, turn around, try to give my kilo enough time to get in his line of fire. I'd rather use a torpedo. If this particular enemy vessel is something with uh, SAMs, it's not going to work. Keep in mind, we picked this up 13 minutes ago, and we also know... Oh, I named him Let Him Have It. Whoops! I was supposed to name that Let Him Have It. Keep in mind, this was 13 minutes ago. He would have traveled to about this point in that amount of time. So again, distance over time, distance over time. Okay, come on, kilo, get into position. Holy smokes. Slow down, slow down, slow down. All stop, all stop, all stop. Periscope. No, no, I don't even like periscope depth. What did you detect? Slow down, slow down, slow down. Put your nose into him. Put your nose into him. Why am I putting my nose into him? I need to do this so that if he's detecting me, I'm presenting the smallest profile possible. That is a lot closer than I expected him to be, assuming he's even there. All right, come on. Spin around. If he's at that distance, we can engage him with Wacomers. What? Uh-oh. Come around. Shallow, 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 shallow. Down, 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 down. Is this an electronic emission, or is this... What is this? Because if this is an electronic emission, I'm not as paranoid. What is it? What is it? What is it? Okay, that's an electronic emission, which means there is something this way. Okay. That puts them somewhere right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark, move my mark real quickly. I've slowed down my uh, Providence significantly. I'm spinning it around. I wanna come up to periscope depth for just a second. Again, this is so risky, but I'm gonna try it again anyway because I really need to triangulate the position of whatever that signal is. Then I can use anti-ship missiles against it. Okay, you stay quiet. All right, he's coming up to the surface. He'll be at periscope depth in just a second. Stop. Down, 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 down. Creep. Creep. Shallow. Okay, this is great news. Because he was looking here, and because this guy was looking here, I was exactly correct and was able to place an enemy skunk. Well, obviously we're cheating a little here. I was able to identify an enemy skunk at that distance right there. This is excellent. So that's 12.3 nautical miles. It's 13.5 nautical miles. We still have no idea what we're dealing with. I'm going to go ahead and put him in a position like this. I'm going to bring his speed up to full again. This is going to get nasty real quick. Come up to full. Take yourself nice and shallow. All right, meanwhile, we're going to have to put our nose back into the other guy because he's going to detect us if we expose our side too much to him. All right, spin us around. Okay, nice and slow, nice and slow. All right, that was 2 minutes and 23 seconds ago, which would put him right about here. So what we could do is we could use our anti-ship missiles like a shotgun. Now, there's two advantages and disadvantages to this. If we do that, if he's in visual range, which is about 12, 15 nautical miles away, he's going to see where they launched from. And I guarantee you a second later, we're going to be on the receiving end of some really, really nasty stuff. So if we're going to do that, we have to be very quick about it, which we're going to take a shot at. My prediction is the target is right there. All right, I'm going to bring you up to periscope depth for one last sniff. All right. Come on up to periscope depth. Again, I just want to be able to triangulate them for my targeting solution. We're going to spam them with anti-ship missiles, and our fingers are going to be crossed that we hit something expensive. Chances are none of them are going to get through, but again, I've got to respect people's time here. 
pause. Okay. Back down to shallow. Back down to shallow. Whoop, shallow. He's probably already knows we're out here, so we're going to have to work fast. All right. They're going to be in here somewhere. Let's go ahead and do a couple tomahawks here. 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 This is very hazardous because if there's any civilians in the neighborhood, unfortunately, they're going to be receiving about 40 tomahawk missiles in about two seconds. Okay, we'll do. Whoop, I did not mean to do that. Alright, gonna go to another one here. Now, this is what I call a shotgun. Fire. Now, this poor guy. <laughs> Look at him go! Off. The now, that enemy is going to be launching every single anti-ship, submarine, everything at us right now, because they're going to see these missiles leaving the water. But my plan is to be out of here before that happens. Because remember, I'm setting my kilo up here. Once I'm out of tomahawks, I'm turning around and getting the hell out of here. Obviously, you want to have a slightly more confirmed target than what I'm using, but I'm not complaining too much here. Okay, let's get out of here. Go. Remember, we're not cavitating. All right, I'm turning around. We're getting out of here. Our kilo will do a pretty good job of listening in in case anything comes launching after us. Get your speed. Ah, that is full speed. That's as fast as we can go at this depth. Bummer. Oh, off they go. These are always fun to watch. Let's see how close I actually was. Eh, there's some stuff out there. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Remember, we're going for the convoy. We're not going for the destroyer. So basically, when we hit those spots, they're going to automatically turn their radars on and start looking for things that are interesting. One of the best anti-ship strategy. <laughs> Look at this. Uh-oh, I see some jamming. Uh-oh, what's going to happen? Let's see here. I do not need to see illumination vectors. I don't need to see this either. Off they go. Let's see what happens here. Looks like a good number of them are kind of attacking off to the side. Uh, what a waste of tomahawks, but hey, it's fun. Oh, he knows somebody doesn't like him. <laughs> oh, they're turning. They're going to somebody else now. <laughs> this is fun to watch. Oh, got another one. Looks like the ones off to the right are going after somebody. Actually, we're doing a pretty good job. I'm not complaining. This is uh, way more effective than I had expected, to be honest. And that is why you're not allowed to carry anti-ship missiles inside submarines anymore. And yes, you can call me out of the fact that these are supposed to be under... Oh, he's trying. He's trying. Is he going to be in time, though? Nope. Nice. Okay. Now it's... I'm going to go ahead and cheat for a second here. I'm going to go ahead and move... Uh, go ahead and order him to move here. I'm going to move him right here, and then I'm going to show you what his weapons do. Okay. Set him to very slow. Periscope. I'm going to shallow, shallow, shallow. Okay. So now this particular submarine is equipped with what they call wake homing, hom what's a homing? Wake homing torpedoes. That is a torpedo that follows the wake of the ship you've engaged. So you'll notice he's actually picked up a ship based on the fact that it's flooding and making all sorts of crunchy noises. He was also able to identify the type of ship at that distance. All right, we're going to go ahead and continue here. It looks like we got, we did a lot of damage here. I'm actually kind of impressed. Usually I'm not quite that good. Again, we're cheating here to save some of the uh, detection time. We could be zigzagging all afternoon trying to identify these guys. All right, we've got them identified. We need a slightly better firing solution than that. And of course, we don't know that there's no destroy up there, but I'm going to bring them up to periscope depth to take a peek anyway. And then we'll go check from the enemy's perspective to see how effective they would have been had they had helicopters or something like that. Stop. Back to shallow. That works for me. Cruise. Okay, let's go ahead and engage this ship. You can have two. No need to waste ammunition. And we're going to go after this one over here. Bring ourselves up to flank. Nice and deep. Now, the cool thing about this torpedo is, is that it'll actually turn itself around when it gets to the target area. Go ahead and speed up time here. Now, notice it missed the target, right? Watch what happens. It'll actually turn around and lock onto the wake of the target and then go find it. Hee 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 hee. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? It did, found the wake and actually followed the ship in. That's a pretty scary torpedo. By the way, it's utterly worthless against submarines because unless they're on the surface, there's no wake. All right, I'm actually going to give myself a slightly tighter intercept course here. I have a feeling I'm going to be off by a little bit here. 
Again, I'm making a lot of noise, but like I said, there's nothing left of the enemy forces, so I'm not too, too worried here. Let's cheat for just a moment. Oh, he knocked somebody's propellers off. He's probably flooding right now. Yeah, he's not doing so hot. All right, proceed again. Yeah, we're we never in the universe send yourself up to periscope depth this close to enemy activity. But the reason I'm doing it is, again, just have some fun here. All right, that works for me. Back to shallow. All right, we've identified a new target right there. Go ahead and sneak up on it as well. Speed up time. All right, let's let him have it. You may have two. And since you're still floating, I'll give you one because I'm polite. And you over there, I'm going to give you one too. Go ahead and reduce my speed to creep. Let my wakehomers go, my pretties, go. You don't have to worry about the wakehomer, by the way, chasing you down. Okay, I'm going to delete this guy for just a second and show you one more thing, and then I'm going to go ahead and head out. I'll go ahead and create this guy, put him right here. Uh, set him to, uh, no, no, shallow, set him to stop. So this particular ship has a special kind of torpedo called a wire guided torpedo. Now what that does is let me actually activate the wire guided torpedo. It's probably going to take him a few minutes to unload the other one and then load the new one in. He did. So wire guided torpedo, after you fire it, you can actually steer it. So for example, if I fire that torpedo at him right now, that uh, weapon's reloading. It'll fire in a second. Wait until the fish is coming around. What's this? <laughs> hey, why'd you do that? <laughs> he's still trying to get revenge on something from a while ago, apparently. All right, I'll wait until he's got that all loaded up for us. Come on. I need that Mark 48, please. Perfect. Lock on to him. What do you mean the weapon's still reloading? Well, obviously. Oh, it's going to be another minute before it's done reloading. Why well, aren't you helpful? Are you done reloading yet? How about now? Five seconds. Good. Torpedo on the watch. Check it out. If I click on this torpedo, because this is a wire-guided torpedo, I can actually tell it to go places. So you can do some really, really fun things like this, where the torpedo can do like a little donut. Keep in mind, it's going to start searching on its own as soon as it gets to the end of its wire. So you can do really fun things where you fire like two or three of these, and you can just sort of sit there and steer them around if you like. Eh, that's kind of rude. I'll give them a little bit of a chance here. Okay, that should pretty much do it for submarine warfare. Keep in mind, some submarines can be used to attack land targets. That's going to be using the exact same procedures that you'd be using using conventional uh, ships as well. All right, we'll watch this torpedo zip in real quick. Switch to the other side, see what happens. Notice he switched to his automatic control, and strike. Let's go ahead and uh, switch to the other side. See how likely it was they detected us. They knew we were here a long time ago, but they never detected us there. Very interesting. All right, let's look at our losses and expenditures. Whoops. You can see uh, they lost a lot today. But notice they never fired anything back at us. All right, enjoy.